Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at using generative AI with Diffusion inside of SketchUp from SketchUp Labs. All right, so this is the uh, Accenture Warehouse page. This is available on Accenture Warehouse right now. This is, uh, we'll put a link to this down below in the description. You can go download it. Uh, you can have a recent version of SketchUp for desktop. This is uh, an extension that does have to install in a fully licensed version of SketchUp. So grab it, download it, and uh, you can do all the things we're about to look at right now. So it is a pre-download. You can just download it and run it up to paper or anything like that. But uh, yeah, follow the link. That's how you get a hold of it. So let's, now that we know how to get it, it does install like a regular extension. So you're going to go in and do your extension manager and install to take a look at that right now. I just want to start with, I have this super basic, simple model right here. You can see it's cavity. It's got maybe like a little uh, deck thing here, vaulted entryway, but that's it. No windows, no geolocation, no materials, just basic geometry. And this is the, this is the piece, this is the spot where diffusion starts to just do its awesomeness. So we're going to come in here under extensions. I have this thing diffusion and that's going to bring up a simple window. This is it. This is all there is not, not enough. Like this is it, but ooh, this is it simple, simple way to use it. Uh, just to run through the UI real quick here, we have uh, a text prompt and this is where I can go in and say, how do I want diffusion to come in and make this image look different? What's like, let's, let's take this and say, uh, we want to make it a rustic cabin in the woods with a lake in the background and lots of pine trees all around. Simple, just a you know, pretty simple description right there. And I'm gonna hit generate. All right, so that's gonna take, like I said, the image, a snapshot of where this is right now. It's gonna send that out to Diffusion. Diffusion's gonna come up with a brand new image or two and pass it back. So here we go, we got it. So it took this image and it gave me three potential solutions. So I pick one of these and you can see, okay, that's pretty good. That's actually like on the lake. Ooh, this one's literally <laughs> floating in the water. So you can see here, I have uh, different options that I could go with. And if you've ever used diffusion, uh, you know that this, this, there's an iterative or any AI, there's an iterative process. The art of fine tuning the prompt is a big part of using AI to generate images. So the idea here is you can come through here and just fine tune this um, and, and get more, you know, start, well, okay, let's see, I wanted a gravel path working up to it and uh, a fire pit on the side. I could start adding that sort of information to it. Um, gravel path leading up to front door and a fire pit with chairs around it to the right. Um, thank goodness that, oops, fit. Good thing, uh, you know, I'm getting prompted to correct my spelling. When I go through and I can just keep generating this image right here rather than my original geometry. So at this point, I'm in that iterative redesign process for an image. So I can keep building upon the images it creates, or I can at any time hit this reset button, which is going to reset back to the image of my model and start from there. Something else I, I did here. I didn't, I didn't erase Sal. So you can see he's actually popping up in each of these images. So we could do this. I could spend a solid 10 minutes of this video, just changing prompts and redrawing, but we got more UI to run through here. Um, I'm going to go not through these it's straight down. I do want to kind of bounce around a little bit because I'm going to hop in before we talk about styles. I want to look at settings. In settings, we have the ability to move these sliders to say how much is the geometry here important and how important is the prompt. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and make a change. I'm going to get rid of cell and then regenerate. So now we're working with just this. So super basic geometry, right? This geometry, I probably not too terribly concerned about respecting the geometry. If I had things like a, a picnic table and some trees put in here and, you know, maybe a car that was a Jeep that was pulled up next to this cabin, then I might be more concerned about respecting my geometry. In this case, I can probably, you know, not, not, not too concerned. Give, I can give diffusion maybe a little more wiggle room to be creative with the geometry, maybe play with this. Uh, whereas if I had more set geometry, like the building was done, this is the building I want to have, I might want to put more respect on the geometry. And in the prompt, I could say, okay, lean harder into what the prompt says than worry about what's in the geometry. And I can, I can basically play around with these 
and get very different results. So if, if I take respect geometry down slide all the way down, I'll get a cabin that looks nothing like the geometry here. It'll be, what does diffusion think is a cabin? And that's what will show up in my images instead of the geometry I'm leading in here with. So there we go, we, we, we brought that down. And you can see, still pretty respectful, but as I gave that a little more prompt influence, uh, I got a little bit more creative or more, uh, uh, you know, a stronger AI visualization vibe than what I had before. I'm really liking the way this is looking. So we can play with that. And like I said, the big part here is going to be what am I feeding into it to begin with, which is my model. My model's very set that I want to respect the geometry more. Um, you can do both. You can say respect my geometry 100% and lean into the prompt influence all the way and see how that works. I, I felt like the best results I was getting was, was giving one of the two a little bit more weight. But this is something, again, with iterative design, if you've done this AI design stuff, you know, you play with these sliders and you design, redesign, redesign until you get what you really want here. Once I have this where I want it, I have a couple options for output. I can scroll down here too. Just should mention here, uh, Learn More is going to take you off to the labs page, tell you a little bit more about this process. And then feedback, labs is where we check potential features out, try them out, let them share them with you and let you see them. Uh, if you want to give feedback, what you think about Diffusion, what you think about the UI, how you think it could be better, issues you're running into, anything like that, click on feedback and you can actually enter that in. Going back to my output here, I really like this. I want to hold on to it. I have a couple options. I could hit add scene and that's going to add, you can see I have some scenes up here that we'll run through in just a second. That'll just add a new scene to this model and save it. So I can always jump back to this image. Or alternatively, I can hit save and that's just going to take this and save it out as an image file wherever I want, on my hard drive, desktop. What I have here is style. Let's look at style real quick. Style's cool because when I pull down my styles, it can give me this drop down, and I have just basic styles that I might want to apply to my AI visualization. So if I want to see what it would look like as a clay model versus a watercolor versus a photograph, uh, basically these will come in and they'll, they'll apply over the top of whatever my prompt is, and give me a new look. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset my image and just hit generate one more time. So this is going to take, you see if I look up here, it's still gonna use my prompt I have here, but it added my watercolor prompts. So it's feeding diffusion with traditional media, painting, watercolor, ink, shaky lines, architectural style, brush strokes, and it's giving me a whole new look and feel over top of that other prompt that I found I really like. So I, li I like this prompt. I can spend as much time as I want redefining that and fine-tuning it, but this, by adding these other prompts, these, these style prompts, it's going to add that additional layer of visualization on top of what was already been created. So just to run through a couple, these are just some other images that got loaded in here. So here's some other, just some other renders that we got. Different prompts, different, different words were being requested, but then also different styles. So you can see it's got some pencil styles, got some more photograph styles. Um, and then different prompts too. This was obviously, we went away from a cabin. This was more of a, you know, house on a beach kind of look. Uh, but you can see all this stuff generated real quickly, right inside Diffusion. I didn't have to go to a final model. I didn't have to model all this stuff or do an import of, of location or anything like that. I was able to get all of this just by clicking a couple buttons, putting in some prompts, and then uh, telling it what I wanted to see. Check it out, SketchUp Diffusion from SketchUp Labs. You can download from the extension store today.